Hello my dear students I hope you all guys are fine in this lecture I will discuss about fetal circulation before starting this video guys I just first want to say that if you will find my video useful then please please do like to my video and if you are new at my channel then subscribe to my channel for getting the regular updates now coming back to the topic that is fetal circulation that is the blood circulation in the fetus so in this lecture i will basically discuss that how the blood circulates in an unborn baby in the fetal circulation shunts are present now what is the meaning of shunt it is actually the connection or anastomosis between the blood vessels such as its definition is a passage or way or anastomosis the meaning of anastomosis is connection so connection between two natural channels especially between blood vessels now why the shunts are required in the fetal circulation because shunts helps the blood to bypass or to skip the liver and lungs why because the liver and lungs are not working properly before the birth of the baby so instead of moving into the liver and lungs the blood bypass these both organs or skip these both organs with the help of shunts there are total 3 shunts which are present in the fetal circulation that i will discuss so the first shunt which is present in the fetal circulation is ductus venosus so here in this diagram you can see this is liver and this is umbilical vein and this is inferior vena cava and here this is ductus venosus it is the shunt which is present between the umbilical vein and inferior vena cava so in order to bypass or in order to skip the liver the blood directly moves from umbilical vein to inferior vena cava through ductus venosus and the second shunt is foramen ovale and this is the shunt which is present between the right atrium and the left atrium of the heart and the third shunt is ductus atriosus in the diagram you can see this is aorta and this is pulmonary trunk or pulmonary artery so the connection between the aorta and the pulmonary artery is known as ductus atriosus so these both shunts allows the blood to bypass the lungs so after the shunts now i am going to discuss that how the blood circulation occurs in the fetus so this is placenta this is umbilical cord which has one umbilical vein and two umbilical arteries and this is the umbilicus of the fetus actually the umbilical vein carries the oxygenated blood from the placenta to the fetus while the umbilical arteries carries the deoxygenated blood from the fetus to the placenta so here you can see the umbilical vein carries the oxygenated blood from the placenta enters into the fetus at the umbilicus and the blood is 80% saturated normally in the case of adults the blood is 98% saturated but in the case of fetus the blood is 80% saturated what is the meaning of saturated it means the oxygen level in the blood or the blood oxygen level so here at the liver the umbilical vein is divides into two branches this is the right umbilical branch and this is the left umbilical branch so the right umbilical branch enters into the liver at the inferior border so here this is the inferior border of the liver and it passes to the right side of the liver and joins the portal vein this is the portal vein so the right umbilical branch supplies the oxygenated blood to the liver and the deoxygenated blood from the liver enters into the inferior vena cava through hepatic veins so this is right hepatic vein and there is one left hepatic vein and this is the terminal part of the inferior vena cava which carries the deoxygenated blood from the lower extremities and this is left umbilical branch which is also known as ductus venosus which passes the oxygenated blood from the umbilical vein to the inferior vena cava so in the inferior vena cava the deoxygenated blood from the liver and lower extremities is mixed with the oxygenated blood but the deoxygenated blood is not enough to impair the quality of oxygenated blood so the quality of oxygenated blood is not affected by the deoxygenated blood so the blood from the inferior vena cava enters into the right atrium so the most of the blood which comes from the inferior vena cava is passes directly from the right atrium to the left atrium through the foramen ovale which is a shunt present between the right atrium and the left atrium of the heart and the oxygenated blood from the left atrium enters into the left ventricle 
and from the left ventricle when the ventricular systole occurs the blood enters into the aorta which is the largest artery in the body so here you can see this is ascending aorta this is arc of aorta while this is descending aorta so the blood from the left ventricle enters into ascending aorta and the arc of aorta and from there branches the oxygenated blood is distributed to the brain heart neck and arms so after the circulation of oxygenated blood the deoxygenated blood from the brain heart neck and arms is enters into superior vena cava here you can see this is superior vena cava which carries the deoxygenated blood and this deoxygenated blood from the superior vena cava enters into the right atrium of the heart so the most of the blood which comes from the superior vena cava is passes from the right atrium to the right ventricle and from the right ventricle this less oxygenated or deoxygenated blood enters into the pulmonary artery normally up to the birth the blood from the pulmonary arteries enters into the lungs for the purification but in the case of fetus as the lungs are not working that's why the lungs offers the huge resistance to the blood and the pressure inside the pulmonary artery is higher than the aorta that's why the blood from the pulmonary artery enters into the descending aorta through the ductus atriosus which is the connection between the aorta and the pulmonary artery and from the descending aorta the blood passes to the trunk and to the lower body of the fetus and the deoxygenated blood from the fetus is carried by the two umbilical arteries to the placenta where it gets oxygenated and gets ready for the recirculation here one question is arises that why the most of the blood from the inferior vena cava is passes directly from the right atrium to the left atrium through the foramen ovale and why the most of the blood from the superior vena cava passes from the right atrium to the right ventricle so the answer of this question is as the inferior vena cava carries the oxygenated blood while the superior vena cava carries the less oxygenated or deoxygenated blood so the most of the blood from the inferior vena cava passes directly from the right atrium to the left atrium through the foramen ovale so that the brain and the heart muscles can get the more oxygenated blood while the less oxygenated blood or deoxygenated blood from the superior vena cava is passes from the right atrium to the right ventricle and then it passes to the trunk into the lower body of the fetus through the ductus atriosus so that's all about fetal circulation i hope you all are clear with this topic but still my dear students if you have any kind of query then please ask me in the comment section i will definitely answer your queries